Chapter 7 Fasting and the Goat Sent Away Were Types of Christ Understanding then, ye children of gladness, that the good Lord has foreshown all things to us, that we might know to whom we ought for everything to render thanksgiving and praise. If therefore the Son of God, who is Lord of all things, and who will judge the living and the dead, suffered, that his stroke might give us life, let us believe that the Son of God could not have suffered except for our sakes. Moreover, when fixed to the cross, he had given him to drink vinegar and gall. Hearken now how the priests of the people gave previous indications of this. His commandment having been written, the Lord enjoined that Whosoever did not keep the fast should be put to death, because he also himself was to offer in sacrifice for our sin the vessel of the Spirit, in order that the type established in Isaiah, Isaiah when, he offered, when he was offered upon the altar, might be fully accomplished. What then says he in the pro prophet? Quote, and let them eat of the goat which is offered with fasting for all their sins. Unquote. Footnote, not to be found in scripture, as is the case also with what follows. He Feely, that's H-E-F-E-L-E, remarks that, quote, certain false traditions respecting the Jewish rites seem to have prevailed among the Christians of the second century, of which Barnabas here adopts some, so as do Justin, Dialogue C. Tri. 40, and Tertullian, Advance Jude 14, Advance Mark 3, 7. End of the footnote. Attend carefully, and let all the priests eat alone eat the inwards unwashed with vinegar. Wherefore, because to me, who am to offer my flesh for the sins of my new people, ye are to give gall with vinegar to drink, Eat ye alone, while the people fast and mourn in sackcloth and ashes. These things were done, that he might show that it was necessary for him to suffer for them. How then ran the commandment? Give your attention. Take two goats of goodly aspect and similar to each other and offer them. And let the priest take one as a burnt offering for sins. And what should they do with the other? A curse, says he, is the one. Mark how the type of Jesus now comes out, and all of you spit upon it, and pierced it, and encircled its head with scarlet wool, and then, thus let it be driven out into the wilderness. And when all this has been done, he who bears the goat brings it into the desert, and takes the wool off from it, and places that upon a shrub, which is called R-A-C-H-I-A. Footnote. In the Codex Index, we find Rachel. The orthographic is doubtful, but there is little question that a kind of bramble bush is intended. Uh, end of the footnote. Of which also we are accustomed to eat the fruits when we find them in the field. Of this kind of shrub alone, the fruits are sweet. Why then, again, is this? Give good heed, you see one upon the altar and the other a curse and why do you behold the one that is a cursed crown because they shall see him then in that day having a scarlet robe about his body down to his feet and they shall say is not this he whom we once despised and pierced and mocked and crucified truly this is he who then declared himself to be the son of god for how like is he to him? With a view of this, he required the ghosts to be of a goodly aspect and similar, that when they see him then coming, they may be amazed by the likeness of the goat. Behold then the type of Jesus was who was to suffer. But why is it that they place the bull in the midst of the thorns? It is a type of Jesus set before the view of the church. They place the bull among thorns, that anyone who wishes to bear it away might may find it necessary to suffer much, because a thorn is formidable, and thus obtain it only as the result of suffering. Thus also says he, those who wish to behold me and hold lay, lay hold of my kingdom 
must your tribulation and suffering oblige me. Acts 14.22 End of chapter 7 Chapter 8 The Red Heifer, a Type of Christ Now what do you suppose this to be a type of? That a command was given to Israel that men of the greatest wickedness literally, footnote, men in whom sins are perfect. Of this and much more that follows, no mention is made in scripture, end of footnote, should offer a heifer and slay and burn it, and that then boys should take the ashes and put them into vessels and bind round a stick, purple wool along with hispis, and that the thus the boys should sprinkle the people one by one in order that they might be purified for their sins. Consider how he speaks to you with simplicity. The calf is Jesus. The sinful men offering it are those that are who led him to slaughter. But now the men are no longer guilty, are no longer regarded as sinners. And the boys that sprinkle are those that have proclaimed to us the remission of sins and purification of heart. To these he gave authority to preach the gospel, being twelve in number, corresponding to the twelve tribes of Israel. But why are these three boys that sprinkle to correspond to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob? Because these are great with God. And why was the wool placed upon the wood? Because by wood Jesus holds his kingdom, so that through the cross, those believing in him shall live forever. But why was Hispus joined to the wood? Because in his kingdom the days will be evil and polluted, in which we shall be saved. And because he who suffers in body is cured to the cleansing efficiency of his hyssop. And on this account, the things which stand thus are clear, but obscure to them, because they did not hear the voice of the Lord. End of chapter 8. Barnabas, chapter 9, the spiritual meaning of circumcision. He speaks, moreover, concerning our ears, how he hath circumcised both them and our heart. The Lord saith in the prophet, quote, In the hearing of the ear, they obeyed me. Unquote. Psalms 18.44 And again he saith, quote, By hearing, those shall hear who are afar off. They shall know what I have done. Unquote. Isaiah 33.13 And, quote, Be circumcised in your hearts, saith the Lord. Unquote. Jeremiah 4.4 4. And again he says, quote, Hear, O Israel, for these things saith the Lord thy God. Unquote. Jeremiah 7, 2. And once more the Spirit of the Lord proclaims, quote, Who is he that wishes to live forever? By hearing, let him hear the voice of my servant. Unquote. Psalms 34, verse 11 through 13. And again he saith, quote, Hear, O heaven, and give ear, O earth, for God has spoken. Unquote. Footnote, Codex Index has Lord, Isaiah 1, 2, and a footnote. These are in proof. And again he saith, quote, Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of this people, unquote. Isaiah 1, 10. And again he saith, Hear, ye children, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Unquote. Codex Syndex reads, quote, It is the voice, unquote. corrected, however, as above. Therefore he hath circumcised our ears, that we might hear his word and believe. For the circumcision in which they trusted is abolished. Footnote. Codex Syndic has, quote, that we might hear the word and not only believe, unquote. Plainly, a corrupt text. End of footnote. For he declared that circumcision was not of the flesh,
for that transgressed because an evil angel deluded them. Footnote. Quote, it syndex at first has, quote, slew them, unquote, but is corrected as above. End of footnote. He saith to them, These things saith the Lord your God. Parenthesis. Here I find a new commandment. Unparenthesized. So not among thorns, but circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Footnote. Codex Syndex with several other leaves out, quote, new, unquote. Jeremiah 4, 3. Codex Syndex has, quote, God instead of, quote, Lord, unquote. And a footnotes. And why speak he thus, quote, circumcise the stubbornness of your heart and harden not your neck, unquote. Deuteronomy 10, 16. But wilt thou wilt say, quote, Yea, verily the people are circumcised for a seal, unquote. But so also is every Syrian and Arab, and all the priests of idols. Are these then also within the bond of his covenant? Footnote. Dressed in Hilgenfeld read, quote, Their covenant. Unquote, as does Coda Syndex. And a footnote. Yea, the Egyptians also practice circumcision. Learn then, my children, concerning all things richly, that Abraham, the first who enjoined circumcision, looking forward in spirit to Jesus, practiced that right, having received the mysteries of the three letters. Footnote. Literally. Quote, doctrines, unquote, end of footnote. For the scripture saith, quote, And Abraham circumcised ten and eight, and three hundred men of his household, unquote. Footnote, not found in scripture. But compare Genesis 17, verse 26 and 27, and Genesis 14, 14, end of footnote. What then was the knowledge given to him in this? Learn the eighteen first, and then the three hundred. Footnote. Codex Syndex inserts, quote, and then making a pause, unquote. The ten and eight are thus denoted, ten by I and eight by H. Footnote. This sentence is altogether admitted in, by inadvertency in the Codex Syndex, unquote. You have the initials of the name Jesus. And because the cross was to express the grace of our redemption by the letter T, he says also 300. He signifies, therefore, Jesus by two letters and the cross by one. He knows this, who has put within us the engraft gift of his doctrine. Footnote. This is rendered in the Latin, quote, the more profound gift, unquote, referring as it does to the G-N-O-S-I-S, of the initiated. The same word is used in chapter 1. End of the footnote. Gift of his doctrine. No one has been admitted by me to a more excellent piece of knowledge than this, but I know that ye are worthy. Footnote. Literally. Quote, has learned a more or genuine word from me, unquote being an idle vaunt of account of the ingenuity in interpreting scripture, he has just displayed. End of footnote. End of chapter 9. Barnabas, chapter 10. Spiritual significance of the precepts of Moses respecting different kinds of foods. Now, wherefore did Moses say, Thou shalt not eat the swine, nor the eagle, nor the hawk, nor the raven, nor any fish which is not possessed of scales. Footnote. Codex Syndex has portion. Corrected, however, as above. See Leviticus chapter 11 and Deuteronomy chapter 14. He embraced three doctrines in his mind in doing so. Moreover, the Lord said to them in Deuteronomy, And I will establish my ordinance among this people. Is there then not a command of God that they should not eat these things? There is, but Moses spoke with a spiritual reference. For this reason he named the swine, as much as to say, Thou shalt not join thyself to men, 
who resemble swine. For when they live in pleasure, they forget their Lord. But when they come to want, they acknowledge the Lord. And in like manner, the swine, when it has eaten, does not recognize its master. But when hungry, it cries out, and on receiving food, is quiet again. Neither shalt thou eat, saith he, the eagle, nor the hawk, nor the kite, nor the raven. Thou shalt not join thyself. He means to such men as know not how to procure food for themselves by labor and sweat, but seize on that of others in their iniquity, and although wearing an aspect of simplicity, are on the watch to plunder others. So these birds, while they sit idle, inquire how they may devour the flesh of others, proving themselves pests to all by the wickedness. And thou shalt not eat, he says, the lamprey, or nor the pipus, nor the cuttlefish. He means, thou shalt not join thyself, or be like to such men as are ungodly to the end, and are condemned to death, in like manner as those fishes above curse, float in the deep, not swimming on the surface like the rest, but make their abode in the mud which lies at the bottom. Moreover, thou shalt not, he says, eat the hare. Wherefore, thou shalt not be a corrupter of boys, nor like unto such. Footnote. Dressel has a note upon this passage in which he refers the words we have rendered, quote, corruptors of boys, unquote, to those who by their desolate lives waste their fortune and so entail destruction on their children. But this does not appear satisfactory. Compare Clemens, Alexandrite, P-A-E-D-A-G period, number 2, 10. End of footnote. Because the hair multiplies year by year, the places of its conception, for as many years as it lives, so many it has. Moreover, thou shalt not eat the hyena. He means thou shalt not be an adulterer, nor a corrupter, nor be like to them that are such. Wherefore, because that animal annually changes its sex, and is at one time male and another female. Moreover, he has rightly to test the weasel. For he means thou shalt not be like to those whom we hear of as committing wickedness with the mouth on account of their uncleanliness. Nor shalt thou be joined to those impure women who commit iniquity with the mouth. For this animal conceives by the mouth. Moses then issues three doctrines concerning meats with a spiritual significance, but they received them according to fleshly desire, as if he had merely spoken of literal meats. David, however, comprehends the knowledge of the three doctrines, and speaks in like manner. Blessed is the man who hath not walked in the counsel of the ungodly. Even as the fishes referred to go to in darkness to the depths of the sea, and hath not stood in the way of sinners, even as those who profess to fear the Lord, but go astray like swine, and hath not sat in the seat of scorners, even as those birds that lie in wait for prey, take a full and firm grasp of this spiritual knowledge. But Moses says still further, He shall eat every animal that, that is cloven-footed and remunent. What does he mean? The remnant animals denotes him, who on receiving food recognize him, that nourishes him and being satisfied by him is visibly made glad. Well spake Moses having respect to the commandment. What then does he mean? That we ought to join ourselves to those that fear the Lord, those who meditate in their heart on the commandment which they have received, those who both utter the judgments of the Lord and observe them, those who know that meditation is a work of gladness, and who remnate upon the word of the Lord. But what means the cloven footed? That the righteous man also walks in this world, he looks forward to that holy state to come. Behold how well Moses legislated, and how was it possible for them to understand or comprehend these things? We then, rightly understanding his commandments, explained them as the Lord intended. For this purpose he circumcised our ears and our hearts, that we might understand these things. End of chapter 10. Having been read by Peter John Parises. Chapter 11. Baptism and the Cross, prefigured in the Old Testament. Let us further inquire whether the Lord took any care to foreshadow the water of baptism and the cross. Concerning the water, indeed, it is written, in reference to the Israelites, that they should not receive that baptism 
which leads to the remission of sins, but should procure, footnote, literally should build, and footnote, another for themselves. The prophet therefore declares, quote, Be astonished, O heaven, and let the earth tremble. Footnote. Code sin has, quote, confined, confined still more, unquote, corrected to, quote, tremble still more, unquote. End footnote. At this, because this people hath committed two great evils, they have forsaken me, a living fountain, and have hewed out for themselves broken sinisters. Footnote. Code sin has, quote, hath dug a pit of death, unquote. See Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 12 to 13. End of footnote. Is my holy hill Zion a desolate rock? For ye shall be as the fledglings of a bird, which fly away when the nest is removed. Footnote. Compare Isaiah chapter 16, verses 1 through 2. End of footnote. And again the prophet said, I will go before thee and make level the mountains, and will break the brazen gates, and bruise in pieces the iron bars, and I will give thee the secret. Footnote, literally dark. Kozin has, quote, of darkness, unquote, end of footnote. Hidden, invisible treasures, that they may know that I am the Lord God. Footnote. Isaiah chapter 45, verses 2 through 3. End of footnote. And, quote, He shall dwell in a lofty cave of the strong rock. Unquote. Footnote. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 16. Code sin has, quote, Thou shalt dwell. Unquote. End of footnote. Furthermore, what saith he in reference to the sun? Quote, his water is sure. Footnote. Coatsin entirely omits the question given above and joins, quote, the water is sure, unquote, to the former sentence. End of footnote. Ye shall see the king in his glory, and his soul shall meditate on the fear of the Lord. Unquote. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 16 through 18. And again he saith in another prophet, quote, The man who doeth these things shall be like a tree planted by the course of waters that shall yield its fruit in due season, and his leaf shall not fade, and all that he do shall prosper. Not so are the ungodly, not so, but even as chaff which the wind sweeps away from the face of the earth. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the counsel of the just. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Uh, Psalms chapter 1 verse 3 through 6. Mark how he has described at once both the water and the cross. For these words imply, Blessed are they who, placing their trust in the cross, have gone down into the water. For, says he, they should receive the reward in due time. Then he declares, I will recompense them. But now he saith, quote, Their leaves shall not fade. Unquote. This means that every word which proceeded out of your mouth is in faith and love shall tend to bring conversion and hope to many. Again, another prophet saith, quote, In the land of Jacob shall be extolled above every land. Unquote. Zephaniah 3.19 This meaneth the vessel of the Spirit, which he shall glorify. Further, what says he? Quote, and there was a river flowing on the right, and from it arose beautiful trees, and whosoever shall eat of them shall live forever. Unquote. Ezekiel chapter 47 verse 12 This meaneth that we indeed descend into the water full of sins and defilement, but come up bearing fruit in our heart, having the fear of God and trust in Jesus in our spirit. Quote, and whosoever shall eat of these 
shall live forever, unquote. This means whosoever, he declares, shall hear thee speaking and believe shall live forever. End of chapter 11. The Epistle of Barnabas, chapter 12. The crown of cross frequently announced in the Old Testament. In like manner, he points to the cross of Christ in another prophet, who saith, quote, When shall these things be accomplished? And the Lord saith, When a tree shall be bent down, and again arise, and when blood shall flow out of the wood. Footnote From some unknown apocryphal book. Hilgenfeld compares it to Habakkuk 2.11. Codex Index refers to God and not to a prophet. And footnotes. Here again, you have an imitation concerning the cross and him who shall be crucified. Yet again, he speaks of this in Moses when Israel was attacked by strangers. Footnote. The Codex in reads, quote, he speaks to Moses, unquote. End of footnote and that he might remind them when assailed that it was on account of their sins they were delivered to death. The Spirit speaks to the heart of Moses that he should make a figure of the cross and of him about to suffer thereon. For unless they put their trust in him, they shall be overcome forever. Moses therefore placed one weapon above another in the midst of the hill. Footnote. But as sin reads, they must have translated heap or mass, uh, equivalent to like a fight. So Moses piled weapon upon weapon in the midst of the battle instead of hill. And a footnote. And standing upon it, so as to be higher than all the people, he stretched forth his hands, and thus again Israel acquired the mastery. But when again he let down his hands, they were again destroyed. For what reason? That they might know that they could not be saved unless they put their trust in him. Um, footnote. Uh, or as some read in the cross. Uh, unquote, end of footnote. And in another prophecy declares, All day long have I stretched forth my hands to an unbelieving people, and one that gainsays my righteous way. Footnote. Isaiah 65 verse 2. And again, Moses makes a type of Jesus, signifying that it was necessary for him to suffer, and also that he would be the author of life. Uh, footnote, Codex Sin has, quote, and he shall make him alive, unquote. End of footnote. Two others whom they believed to have, de to have destroyed on the cross when Israel was fallen. For since transgression was committed by Eve, through means of the serpent, the Lord brought it to pass that every kind of serpent bit them and they died. That he might convince them that on account of their transgression, they were given over to the straits of death. Moreover, Moses, when he commanded, quote, He shall not have any graven or molten image for your God, unquote. Deuteronomy 27 verse 15 did so that he might reveal a type of Jesus. Moses then makes a brass and serpent and places it upon a beam and by proclamation assembles the people. When therefore they were come together they besought Moses that he would offer sacrifices in their behalf and pray for their recovery. And Moses spake unto them saying, when any one of you is bitten, let him come to the serpent placed on the pole, and let him hope and believe that every, even though dead, it is able to give life. Immediately he shall be restored. And they did so. Thou hath in this also an indication of the glory of Jesus, for in him and to him are all things. Compared to Colossians 1.16 what again says Moses to Jesus, Joshua, the son of Ned, that when he gave him this name as being a prophet, with this view only that all the people might hear, 
that the Father would reveal all things concerning his Son Jesus to the Son of Nave. This name then being given him, when he sent him to spy out the land, he said, Take a book into thy hands and write what the Lord declares, that the Son of God may will in the last days cut off from the roots of the house of Emlech. Behold again, Jesus, who was manifested both in type and in flesh, is not the Son of Man, but the Son of God. Since therefore they who were to say that Christ was the Son of David, fearing and understanding the error of the wicked, he saith, The Lord saith unto my Lord, Sit at thy, my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. And again, thus saith Israel, The Lord said to Christ, My Lord, whose right hand I have holden, that the nations should yield obedience before him, and I will break in pieces the strength of kings. Uh, that is found in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1. Behold how David called him Lord and the Son of God. End of chapter 12.